again and again. Today is your own turn. Now yes. that lady stood here and said she came here for marital settlement or what? Service. That was her own service. Today will be your own. She said she had it first service, second service. Wow. That means my home can be settled. And today, by the grace of God, one year separation from the husband, they are back together. Did you hear that testimony? There are many more testimonies. Healings, deliverance. Somebody came in here. Strange sickness. Strange sickness. So when it was, it was anointed, that strange sickness disappeared. Somebody's mother was bad there, legs swelling up, all manner of issues. Call pastor, and he called. That was the end. God is still in the restoration business. He will restore you in the name of Jesus. Just last Sunday, there is no service we have heard here where God has not given up proofs. Just last Sunday, somebody was here. He didn't even have anointing oil. They gave him. And he used it and rubbed his head, rubbed his body. He said, it became bulletproof for me. They shot him and the thing couldn't enter his body. <laughs> Hallelujah. He stood here by himself, walked by himself here today share the testimony. He has done it before. He can do it again. Hallelujah. And many, many more testimonies. For all these, and the ones that are not shared too, which is, the ones that are not shared are actually greater. Because you have not shared your own. Hallelujah. Lift your voice, lift your hand. Let's appreciate this God. Let's glorify this God. The caller is the doer. The call is not the doer. So let us ascribe glory to the caller. Father, we thank you. We we'll give you the glory and praise. Thank you for your strange acts and strange works in our midst. Thank you for testimony shared and unshared. Restorations. Lord, we we'll glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus, for this on time testimony. Restoring a home after one year's separation. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you for your strange hand, strange acts. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be magnified. We glorify your name, Lord. To you alone be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle walking king God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Lord, your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle walking king God. 
Holy Spirit, step into do your work, your strength, work, your heart, your strength, your heart. In a very abacata, I have a producer, and there's one of Ranaka, Maria Catama, Yahweh, 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 we call on you. And there's one of Maraburia, and there's a Bragata, and there's a Maduna, Maria, and there's a producer. Father, we thank you. Worship it. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the place to be. This is our covenant day of restoration. There are two major ways God blesses his people. Number one is favor. And number two is restoration. There's no blessing that will be outside that. Favor, test, care, of your today and your tomorrow. Restoration takes care of your past. His mercy will call, cover your errors. His grace will call your efforts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now for all these favor and restoration, he has a time for each one. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time has come. There's always a time of favor. Psalm 102, 13. There's also time for restoration. And today is one of such. <laughs> Acts 1, 6. Without, O Lord, at this time, restore back the kingdom, back to Israel. God will restore to you whatever the enemy has stolen with her. Or denied you. In Jesus' glorious name. Please come with me to Isaiah 42, 22. I take my test from there. It is a covenant of restoration. Remember, the serious teaching we've been running on is understanding how God leads. So we're looking at part 4 being the service. Get the teaching of the first service powerfully delivered. It will do you well. And all that Sunday service 6. Please do well to get them. Now in this covenant of restoration, come with me to Isaiah 42, 22. If you are there, we're going to read together or you read through the screen. One, two, go. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Right? And they are hid in prison houses that for a prey and none deliverer for a spoil and none say yet restore. Today you'll be restored. If God can get somebody to say restore to you, he will restore. If Nehemiah told them, restore to them their land, they say, we will restore. And today, with all humility of heart, I've been anointed and sent to speak restoration to you. You know, I'm so glad because it's one of my core assignments, not only as a pastor, but that's one of the assignments he gave me here. Remember, 22nd of September, I told us the five-fold assignment he gave me here. Number one, he said, go and establish me, these people. Go and settle them. (laughs) 
Terminate their sorrow, shame, and struggles. Restore them and advance them. I call it Operation Extract, and God has been doing that. These are people robbed and spoiled. That lady said she didn't know what meant her to move out of her husband's house. She maybe robbed her of her peace in her home. But when she came in here, after one year, God restored her home. She was moving as a vagabond. She said I was like a vagabond, moving from one place to the other. But when she entered here, God restored her home. She's back with her husband now. New honeymoon. One of us, about three months ago, stood here and showed us a handsome baby boy. How did the baby come? Four years before that time, she had a surgical operation because of a tobic pregnancy, and her tooth were removed. So the gynecologist told her, forget about childbearing. You can see. But when she had me talk about on the operation extra, she said, I need the R, the restoration. And she began to pray. She coming for operation push, serving God in the choir and other presses. And God of heaven, tubes or no tubes, gave her a handsome baby boy. That baby was shown to us on this altar. How many of us saw the baby? To God be the glory. What is that? Restoration. Restoration. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, withheld from you, whatever he has robbed you of, whatever he has spoiled in your life, <laughs> today God will restore to you. <laughs> See, these are people robbed and spoiled. So anytime you are robbed, get, you can get it back by restoration. Anytime you are spoiled, you can get it back by restoration. Whatever has snared you whole, kept you in the prison of life. There are people who are not in physical prison, but life, has, they are in prison of life. Because nothing is working. They just move around circle. Every year they end up yawning. Because they can't see anything good. But God said, today, because restoration is going to be spoken to you, he will restore to you. Yeah. Now hear me, your toiling is over. The restore means to bring back to the former or original state. Restore is made up of two words. Re, which is a prefix, and store, to bring back to the, to the original state or to the former state. It means reinstatement, restitution of lo for loss or damage. The action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. Today, God is going to be restoring someone's marriage. Like that daughter of Zion that shared her testimony this morning. Somebody's job, lost job will be restored. Lost opportunity will be restored. Your heart will be restored. Oh, Jeremiah 30, 16 to 17, he said, All that devour you shall be devoid, all that spoil you shall be spoiled, all that prey you shall be preyed upon. All your adversaries will go into captivity for I, the Almighty, will restore her to you and heal you of your wound. It is the will of God to restore to you. I command your head restored. I command your place of dignity, honor, and position restored. I command your finances, your business, your career restored. I command your joy, your peace, your spiritual life, your prayer life, your word study, restore in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That lost contract, that lost opportunity, that lost appointment, that lost opportunity to get a visa, I command it restore. Yeah. Remember the opening scripture we read? From it you can see that there's nothing lost when it comes to God. And restoration is the antidote to shame. Then I will restore to you the years the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has eaten, my great army, which has sinned among you. And my people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Lack goes when restoration comes. My people will eat in plenty and be satisfied. Abundance is coming your way, sir. 
Abundance is coming your way, man. My people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And they will bless the name of the Lord your God. You know, it is easier to bless God when things are working. <laughs> you don't even need anybody to tell you to bless God. There's a kind of testimony you will get now. Nobody will start singing without anybody beating any, singing any song for you. You won't know when you start singing. You don't know when your 32 will show. Ah. My people will eat in plenty and be satisfied. And bless the name of the Lord their God. And my people shall never, 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 never be ashamed. My people shall what? Never. He repeated that also in verse 27. My people shall never be ashamed. So, restoration is the antidote to shame. Joel chapter 2, 25 to 27. is the antidote to shame. Whatever be bringing shame to you, God will render to you double. Yeah. Woman came in here someday, 16 years in marriage, exactly 22nd of September, 2019. And she had me say that a woman is here, 16 years in marriage, no child. And you are having issues in your home. God is going to settle those issues. God is going to give you your children. Sometime 2020, around July, she came back with testimony. Twins, after 16 years. She came in here that day as a first-timer. First-timer. All the way from Abuja. That testimony was shared on this altar. Now hear me. God is still in the business of restoring. Restoring the years you sowed in tears. Restoring the years you sowed in tears. I don't know how the struggles have been like. I don't know how it has been from the beginning of the year till now. In the first service, he gave us a word that four months is too much for him. Now hear me, between now and December 31st, what you will see will be far greater than what you saw from the beginning of the year till now. The God of restoration will visit you. Your secret years will be wiped away. Now to enjoy restoration, you need to understand how God lives among others. Because one thing is that when he becomes your shepherd, he becomes also your restorer. Psalm 23, 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, he leadeth me beside the sea water. He restoreth. Present continuous tense. Up to tomorrow, he's in the business of restoring. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me beside the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not for your sake, for his name's sake. So for his name's sake, God will restore to you. But ensure you are following his leading. Because when he becomes your shepherd indeed, you will not lack anything, including restoration. He becomes your restorer. So we need to understand how God lives. And the need to understand how God lives cannot be overemphasized. Because Proverbs 14 verse 12 told us there is a way which cement right unto a man but the end thereof are ways of death. So that it seems right does not make it right. You better check it out with him before you are checked out. What we do not know, we do not know. <laughs> and what we don't learn, we cannot know. And what we do not know, we will pay for it. Many of the things we are paying for today in terms of regrets, in terms of losses, and because of what you don't know. See, my people are going into captivity because they lack no knowledge. Not because the devil is powerful. Spiritual ignorance is the worst disease anyone can suffer. Spiritual ignorance. No man knows the things of a man except by the spirit of man. The same way no man knows the things of God except by the spirit of God. Say now you have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that quitches of God, that you might know the things that are freely given to you. If you don't know what is freely given to you, you won't even know when you will lose, you lose it or when to ask for it. If you don't know what is what is yours, they would collect it from you. You still be thanking them. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's Corinthians 2, 11 to 12. God will open your eyes to know what to look for. God is still teaching people the way to go. God is teaching us to profit. Quickly, as we go in this subject, 
how do we assess divine guidance? Because if you must understand the way God leads, one of the things you need to know is how to assess divine guidance. If you don't know the way to go, how can you get there? How do we assess divine guidance? Number one, we want to see in this service is that you need joy and rejoicing. So when I'm telling you to be joyful, it is for your good. Isaiah 30, 29 to 30. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart. Say with me, gladness of heart. That is joy. As when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel, what will be the effect? Verse 30. Read with me. One to go. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstone. So God will not speak until the environment of joy is created. Until you go with gladness of heart, you can't hear him. And if you can't hear him, it is a Luther continuum. Many have never heard God before. So it is try and error. Doing whatever comes to their mind. And most of the time to their regrets and to losses. It is joy that announces the presence of God. God cannot operate in a joyless environment. And if he's not there, how can you hear him? Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And thy right hand, the right hand there are pleasures for evermore. Hear me, when joy with us, everything with us, including the voice of the Lord, including testimonies, signs and wonders. You know, the first time I came to this church, the first Sunday, second Sunday, you see a new world, the thing will bounce back on you. The whole place was like this. Nobody laughs, nobody smiles, everybody. I say, what? Well, thank God it's not like that today. You see people going to church, they're smiling. They're happy. Somebody once came and told me, he said, sir, I mean, first time, man. But what I saw in church today, even though I've not received my answer, the way I went back with joy, I know my answer is coming. <laughs> God does not oppress when he choked the environment. No. Joy announces his presence. And when joy with us, everything with us. Joy chapter 1 verse 12. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also. And the apple tree. And even all the trees of the field are with us. Because joy is with us away from the sons of men. When joy withers from you, even his voice will wither. You won't hear. Direction withers. Never allow anything to steal your joy. Now, I want to give you an illustration that will help you understand this better. How many of us use a uh, uh, mobile phone, GSM phone? Is it okay? Do you know, there are some places you go, you don't get network. Is it true? I preach one message in about one day, network not available. <laughs> it's what, one of the things that makes network not available is joylessness. Hmm? Unforgiving spirit, bitterness, hatred. There are some environment you go, or maybe because of weather, you discover that the network will cease. Is it true? Mm -hmm. So anytime you are lacking joy, is network not available? Somebody may be calling you, but that time there will be no signal. Are you getting me? <laughs> so when you are joyless, you have you have you have you are cut off the spiritual network. You can't be rich. You're on that network, not available area. Like you travel to some villages, no network there. They can't reach you. The same way God can't reach you when you are joyless. Say with me, I hear. Number two. You need to create a serene and quiet environment. Many people are rowdy in life. You can't hear God on the rowdy environment. 
There are some people, even when they're alone, they're still around the inside because their thought is going to different things. Hmm? This market I want to go, this soup I want to cook, this one, that one. That's why, have you seen some people moving on the road and vehicle hit them because they have, they've lost themselves? The man may be quiet, but he's around the inside. He has gone somewhere. There are some people you are talking with them, they've gone. If you're a teacher here, you understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have to call, are you with us in this class? The man has gone, he put hand there, he goes somewhere. <laughs> God does not speak in a rowdy environment. That's why sometimes you need to separate yourself to hear him. Separate yourself. Maybe we pray and fasting alone with him. In a retreat. It's one of the things we have lost. We need to go back to that. Make a retreat. And you hear God. You hear him clearly. Proverbs 18 verse 1. Proverbs 18 verse 1. By desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom. You need some separation sometimes. Separate from the rowdy environment of maybe your family, your work. Seek the face of God. Wait on him and you'll hear him. That's what happened. In 1 Kings 19, 11 to 12, remember, the earthquake came. Strong wind blew. Elijah did not hear God, but he heard him in a still small voice. Say with me, a still small voice. God still speaks like that today. Still small voice. Check your life. Many of the miracles you receive, many of the testimonies you receive, they never happen when you are just running head task. But when you are restful, quiet, he will show you the way out. Show you the way out. So you need, you need that. Miracles happen in a quiet and restful, calm environment or state. Ask Adam. It was when Adam was put to rest, God created and formed Eve from his ribs. And when you woke up, you say, wow, <laughs> this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Ah. God's servant, how did he receive the vision of this ministry? God told him, separate yourself in a place, quiet place. I want to talk to you. And when he entered that hotel, God now gave him the 18-hour open drum vision. There's too much noise today. Young people, please help yourself. Even the, I'm talking of young people, even some old people are behaving like young people today. You see an old man, he carry earphone like small children. Even on the road. Have you not seen that? He say, hey, wait, sir, I'm calling you. They don't hear. They can't even hear. Physical one, they can't hear. Is it the one God is talking they will hear? Block the ear. Listening to music. Moving on the road. Some even put it that driving. How will you hear horn of another car? So some to the extent that even when they're sleeping, when they want to go to bed, they still put earphone. Listen to music. Some may even be in church. Pastor is preaching. They're browsing rubbish. They can't hear anything. You know, spiritual things are slippery. You don't need more than a word. Just a word can change your life. With their browsing phone. That's why we say don't come with phone. Very soon, we will mandate them to start using it. They'll be browsing. Children, know, they're teaching them in church, they're browsing. Rubbish. A story was told about South Korea. That 10,000 churches closed in 10 years. That's 1,000 churches a year. What was happening? These are people who their parents experienced revival. But because they didn't want to follow the word of their father, they're browsing. Cha, cha, cha. Some say church will close, they wouldn't know. It's when everybody has gone. Ah. <laughs> They've gone. You need to create quiet. Sometimes you do that. Now listen to me. Personally, I discovered the most quiet place I have is my convenience. That's what you may come to my office, I say there, not that I'm doing the other one, I may be reading. Just trying to hear a voice. Sometimes even before service like this, I enter there and sit down to just get a word. And that word, you come and say it. Testimony three months. 
coming from it. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You need to be quiet sometimes. And because if I'm there, you can't come and disturb me. I may be in the office for money. Nobody won't even allow me to stand up. But if I enter there, you can't come and meet me there. I'm telling you from experience. I've had more things in that place than any other place. My book that one type of person should never marry. I didn't study it. I didn't read it. I didn't study it. I didn't know it. You know what is inspiration? Inspiration is the knowledge you did not learn. It was in my prayer walk, quiet prayer walk with God. I had it. That one type of person should never marry. Father, what is what about that one type of person should never marry? He started giving me. I stood up and wrote everything. That book you see, and the book is selling like that. One day, somebody walked into my office, bought one twenty thousand. What of it? What of books, including that one? I had it. I didn't read it. I never. I didn't know it. And I asked myself, if I didn't separate myself that night, maybe. Can you imagine how many people? People have traveled from far places to come and see me because of that. Please create quiet places. Number three is through the ministry of teaching priests. The ministry of what? You need that in your life. Second Chronicles 15 verse 3. Now for a long season Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. If these three things are missing in your life, you are heading for problem. God forbid. No teaching priest to direct you, to tell you what to do. There are some people here, nobody can tell them what to do. As the young woman, Nobody can correct them. Nobody can teach them. No true God. No law. If your life, you know, life is run by principles and laws. And by principles and laws, you can predict the future. You can know what will happen tomorrow. Somebody was asked one time how they succeed in going to the moon. The man asked that going to the moon it takes precision. He said it's like somebody shooting a mosquito from kilometers away. He said, if it's so, how do you get it? How do you navigate yourself? And get, he said, by principles, by laws and principles. He said, principles helps you to predict where something will land. How are you getting me now? The same way you can predict where your life will get tomorrow or where you are going by following certain principles and laws. That's just by the way. Isaiah, 20, Isaiah 30 verse 21. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk in it. And you shall turn, not, turn to the left when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. You need the ministry of the teaching priest in your life. That's why I can't, I, I can't understand why some people will be coming to this kind of place and then say, miss it or go and be doing some things. Wisdom is hearing these things of mine and doing them. Why will you come to hear the word of God and you will not put it to work? That is foolishness. The one that didn't hear at all is even foolish, let's square. We saw in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5, that if you like read it down to verse 8, Uzziah was a small boy. He was giving 100% votes. To become the king. It was just 16 years. But he followed the teachings of Zachariah. He sought the Lord in the times of Zachariah. And that, because of that, God made him to prosper. God helped him. He became a king, became a mechanical engineer. He began to manufacture equipment that was shooting stone, armored vehicles. He was, as a matter of fact, Uzziah was marvelously helped until he became very great. But a time came in his life. He thought that his, because of what he was seeing, he removed himself from the ministry of the teaching priest. I'll read 15 to 20 for you. Look at what happened to him when he dislodged himself. Because that's what happened to some of us. Some start well, but when things begin to work, they dislodge. Thinking that it's by their own effort. Hear me, something follows you here to go and make things happen for you in the marketplace. Verse 15 to 20. 
And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the ball wall, to shoot arrows and great stones without. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord in his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar. He assumed the place of priest. Nobody, he's a king. Nobody gave him priesthood. He wanted to do it. And Azariah the priest went in after him, a teaching priest, and went with four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertained not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Say, what are you talking about? Am I not the king? I can do anything I like. <laughs> he said, Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast respired. Neither shall it be for thy honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wrought and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wrought with the priest, the leprosy even rose upon his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord. For beside, from beside the incense altar, and Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked unto him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord has met him. Never you despise the ministry of teaching priests. Some people are being flogged by God. Some people, it's God that's punishing them because of this. They despise the prophets. Read 2 Chronicles 26, 36, verse 16. They despise the prophets. They misuse the prophets. God sent them. He said, I will give you a priest after my, a, a, a pastor after my, to teach you knowledge and understanding. They despise that. 2009, I learned from my own teaching priest and prophet, Bishop Oyedebo. Something I've been asking God for years. God used him to answer the question. He came to Enugu, and we, I was in Abad then. We went to see him. And he was having a meeting with some pastors. I don't know how many people took lessons, but I took one serious lesson. He answered questions. Before that time, I, 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 I was like a perfectionist. I like things to be done the way it's supposed to be done. I, I don't have patience for anything that's not excellent. So, he said something that day. He said, the gift of God is perfect. But the man that carry it is imperfect. Eh? He said, if you are looking at the imperfectness of the man that carries the gifts, you will miss the perfect gift that you're supposed to collect from the man. I said, eh? So I made up my mind. I don't look for faults. It's what you look for, you get. Are you getting me now? If you look for fault, you'll find fault because the man is imperfect. But if you look for the grace of God, the gift of God he has, you'll collect it. That's what you're looking for. That's my lesson. It answer the question I've been asking for years. Because sometimes, how should somebody like this do something like this? Now, why now? I get angry. But since that time, mm -mm. all I'm looking for is the good. I don't need to get my point. I've told you here how another teaching priest, Bishop, uh, Bishop Abioye, taught me how a sheep is stronger than a lion. If you didn't get to the second Sunday of the morning, I think I taught us that. Eh? That being a sheep, you will not lack. But as a lion, you can lack. So which one is better? To be guru 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 and you lack. And then to be meek and humble and be a sheep and follow him. Follow like this and you will not lack food. Which one is better? <laughs> I told my wife after that, I, when I came back from that um, trip, I told my wife, if I'm to read for 20 years, I won't see this secret. Ministry of teaching, please. They open your eyes to certain things. So how do I know that I'm following the leading of God? How do I prove it? What are the biblical proofs? What are the characteristics of divine direction. Number one is supernatural insight. If God is leading you, He will give you insight. He will give you that. He will give you understanding, supernatural insight, revelation. 
Isaiah 48, verse 17. Remember, he said, I'm the Lord thy God that teaches you, that leadeth you in the way that thou shouldest go, that teaches you to profit. So when God is teaching you, he will give you revelation. Now, there's a difference between revelation and information because many people are struggling and frustrated because all they have is information. Information cannot transform. It is revelation that transforms. Information shows you what is available. That information shows you the promise of God. This is what he has promised. That's what information will do. But revelation shows you what to do to assess that promise. And when you do it, you will assess the promise. So be a revelation hunter. Because when you know what to do and you do it, God blesses you. God blesses you for what you do. And you can't do except you know. Say with me, I hear. So you need insight or revelation to recover. Until you know what you have lost, how will you recover it? Until you know what is stolen, what is denied you, what is withheld from you, how can you go for restoration? It is discovery that leads to recovery. What the devil does is to blindfold the minds of people that they will not see the glorious light of the gospel. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. Devil has blindfolding ministry. He closes the cheapest person to cheat is the blind man, sir. You carry this thing is white, you tell him this is red. Do you believe? He says, Yes, sir. He can't see it. He can't see it. You can hardly deny what you can see. You may deny what you hear, but you can't deny what you have seen. Eh? This thing I saw myself. Ha. That's why revelation is important. They were cutting the ass head in 2 Kings chapter 6, 5 and 6. He said, show me where the ass head fell. If you don't know where it fell, you can't recover it. Show me. Show me where it fell. They say, Elisha, come and do miracles. He said, relax, it's not miracles. Show me where it fell first. If you don't know where the ass head fell, you can't recover it. That's why revelation is very, very important. When the prodigal son came to himself, he was restored. Check second. Luke chapter 15 verse 17. He came to himself. He said, ah, why am I eating this kind of food? When I'm in my father's house, people are eating uh, all manner of good things. He said, I better go back to my father. Let, him, let me be part of the servants. I don't want to be a son again. But when he went back, the father welcomed him. Gave him back. Everything remaining was his brother's own. The sea gave it to him. Because he had wasted his own. And the brother was there getting angry. But because he doesn't know how to ask like that one. The prodigal son taught me more lessons than his brother. Number two thing you get is liberty of the spirit. Second Corinthians three seventeen. Now we are the now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Look at the spirit. There is capital S, talking about the Holy Spirit of God. Anywhere the spirit of God is, there is what liberty. That's why that time I came, I saw everywhere like this. I say, eh. Hear me, until the Holy Ghost steps in, there's no miracle. Until the Holy Ghost steps in into a place or in a, in a situation, no miracle happens. He's the chief executive of God upon the earth here. And whenever he's there, one of the things he'll show is liberty of the spirit. Anytime you want to do anything, your mind is choking. You cannot, you just want to, you see something is holding you back. Check it. Please, check it. The time used in checking it is not wasted. It's like you going to cut a tree and you say, let me go and sharpen my knife first or cut last. It's not wasted because in execution, you'll get it back. The man that didn't sharpen his own can be still struggling there, sweating. You just come there. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So the time you spend in getting direction is not wasted. So if you are choking, that the thing is everywhere, you just you want to take step, and the thing is choking you, please, wait. Ask God for direction. Ask him what to do. Any step you want to take, and you discover there's no liberty of the spirit, please, God is not there. You see, liberty of the spirit is a peace of mind that umpires, that spiritual umpire that shows you when God is with you in a thing. Did you understand that? Don't forget this truth. That's why <laughs> in Acts chapter 20, 22 to 23, remember, 
Paul was to go to he was to go to Jerusalem. I said he wanted to go to Jerusalem. He actually wanted. It was his ambition. It wasn't God's vision for him. Because he was bound in the spirit. Even when he went to the house of Ag Agabus, the three, five daughters prophesied the same thing. He said, no, I must go to Jerusalem. He went there. A whole poor that can go to heaven and come down. That can call down fire like Elijah. A whole poor. They shaved his head. Gorimaba. Free of charge. He was messed up. Because he wasn't where God wanted him to be. May you not miss God's place for your life. Anyway, today is a covenant of restoration. Now hear me. If you want to be restored, you need to be redeemed of God. Because every redeemed child of God you know, is called for glory and honor. So by restoration, God is going to be restoring your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Also, understand the times and seasons we are. God is a God of times and seasons. Every time he says it's time of restoration, that's what he does. If he says it's time of favor, that's what he does. This is the season. God is restoring all things. We serve the God of times and season. This He makes all things beautiful at his own time. This is revival season. A revival season is time of restoration. He said, revive thy works in the midst of thy days. God will revive you in Jesus' mighty name. Remember that God, our God in our midst is mighty. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. He's mighty to restore also. Zephaniah 3, 17 to 20. You will be revived in Jesus' mighty name. God of heaven that revived others, restored others, like that testimony we had in this service of restoration of marital peace and harmony will restore yours in Jesus' mighty name. Remember also that kingdom advancement in devils entitles every believer to restoration. He will restore you in Jesus' mighty name. But you see, you must seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when you are a seeker of the kingdom of God, you become a candidate for restoration. In Joel chapter 2, 23 to 27, it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full with wheat and vast and overflow with wine and oil. And he will restore to you the years the locust has eaten the caterpillar, the palm of worm, and my people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And bless the name of the Lord our God, who has dealt wondrously with us. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. That shame will not come. The God of restoration will restore you. I command your peace restored. Your joy restored. I command your business, your career restored. I command your family restored. Whatever war is warring with you, with your family, because my Bible told me that God make it wars to cease. I command that war to cease. They gave you that permission, that position, but they are warring with you. God will silence them. In the name of Jesus. Your glory, your dignity is restored in the name of Jesus. Whatever be denied you, whatever be with us, stolen from you, I command them restored in the name of Jesus. The God of heaven will restore you in Jesus' glorious name. Rise on your faith. Now we're going to pray and demand for a restoration in a short while, but before we do that, I want everyone to be on the same platform so that we can enjoy what we're talking about. When the prodigal son returned, he was restored. They gave him clothes, gave him ring, gave him the fatted car. God said, return to me and I will return to you. Some people are here, you know you've been far from God. He said, draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Return to me and I will return to you. You may have tried other things, drugs, alcohol, women, men, but none has helped you. Come to Jesus. Come to the Prince of Peace. Come to the restorer of our soul. He said he will restore your soul. Remember, repentance is the criteria for the pouring of the Spirit. Until you repent, until you turn, it's not your turn for a turnaround. Acts 3, 19 to 21, he said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out when the times of refreshing, which is times of restoration, shall come. 
from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus, which, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. Restitution just stands for restoration of all things. How many things? Is your own there? If you want restoration, the cardinal requirement is repentance. Repent. Repent. So somebody is here today. You want to give Jesus opportunity to be the Lord and restorer of your soul. You want him to save you. Please don't shy from it. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody here, you gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did, but you are no more there. You can't feel God around you. No good, no joy, no peace. Why not turn to him? Return to him, he will return to you. Put your hand on your chest, also pray this prayer. And some are struggling with a certain evil habit. You can't share with your husband, your wife, can't share with anybody, but you know that it's up and down. You are struggling. Why not allow Jesus to help you? New Year resolution didn't help you. Is this not all God's? Did you last January? Why not turn to him and let him help you? Let him help you. Let him help you. If you are among the category of prayer I mentioned, please put your hand on your chest. There are sincere people here. Sincerely, you will not reject a sincere and contrite heart. Please put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died. You resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart, I sincerely and with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name now in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for changing my story. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a new beginning. I give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. I am born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a member of the household of God. Please, you.